hello hi everyone welcome back to our channel little underrated uh, today we are gonna check out a video of thing school titled as how a danish genius cash flow strategy fueled the super fast expansion of a danny group so probably uh, in this video it will be revealed regarding the cash sources of Adani Group. Adani has been running many companies. Uh, some of them are listed in the stock market as well. Most of them actually. I think six or seven are listed currently. And uh, what is the source for these companies? Right, because Adani himself started from a very humble background. He did, did not had any money of his own to invest in the business. So where he has been raising all of this money and how this money is helping his companies out to expand a lot and to scale a lot you know before even coming to the market with the ipos uh, with these companies uh, a huge sum of capital was still required while uh, starting up the businesses and his businesses also if you uh, see in terms of the domain are in majorly in the domains which require the extensive extensive capital to start with you know it is it, those are not the businesses you can start uh, with with the individual person uh, investing some of his money borrowing from relatives or some friends it requires a lot of money which may comes from big money sources like banks or institutional uh, funds or investors or some other sources which probably will be talked about in this video so let's jump to the video to gather some more insights Adani Enterprises, the incubating arm of Adani Group, has delivered 1100% to shareholders in the last five years. Indian infrastructure mogul Gautam Adani became the richest Asian billionaire in history earlier this month. They, they are one of the largest developer and operator of coal mine in India, with a production capacity of 15.5 million ton. Shares of each of those businesses are up between 19% and 195% this year as Adani has led aggressive expansion into renewable energy, media, airports, and more. Hi everybody, the Adani Group is one of the most iconic businesses in the Indian business history. And what's absolutely mind-boggling about them is that, in the past 10 years, the Adani Group single-handedly went on to become India's largest private port operator, largest coal importer, coal miner, private power producer, city gas distributor and the largest edible oil importer in the country. They have been buying giant companies as if you and I would buy a pair of sneakers. For example, in 2018, the group bought Reliance Transmission for 12,300 crores, JMR Chhattisgarh for 5,200 crores, Katupuli Port for 1,950 crores and paid 228 crores for the power transmission line from Bikaner to Sikhar. This one year of shopping alone adds up to a bill of 19,687 crores. And as we all saw, this year they bought Ambuja and ACC for 81,000 crores and went on to become the second largest cement manufacturer overnight. And as a result of this incredible speed of expansion, in the past 5 years, the stock price of each of their companies has shot up by an insane rate. Well, Adani Power has shot up by 800%, Adani Enterprise has shot up by 2400% and Adani Green has shot up by a mind-boggling 5000%. And while most of us would be awestruck at these figures, very few people realize that the Adani Group is not sitting on a mountain of profits, but a mountain of debt. And the point to wonder over here is that, while Tata Group and Reliance both have cash cows in the form of TCS and petrochemicals which are extremely profitable businesses, the Adani Group does not have a super profitable business to bank on yet. But even then, they have managed to gather a debt of 2.2 trillion rupees. So the question is, how are the Adanis getting such heavy loans to buy so many companies? What exactly is their business strategy? And lastly, what are the study materials to help you understand the debt strategy of the Adanis better? Before we continue with this detailed Adani story, let me thank our partners of this episode and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community which enables learning and improves our skills. Our team previously took up Jerry Murad's illustration class as well as Jordi Vandiput's basic Premiere Pro video editing class which greatly improved the creativity of our videos. This time, we are looking at Thomas Dadger's class on storytelling through film which talks about how to create engaging videos for YouTube. 
as an education and information channel we must present even the most mundane facts in the most interesting manner possible in order to engage our audience and this class has helped us a lot to understand the principles behind that and that too from an industry expert himself we learned how to build compelling narratives and create a sense of thrill in order to engage the audience better in order to make them stay till the end skillshare has experts on every possible topic out there and you can learn on the go and get an opportunity to engage with people from all across the world with similar interests and share your projects with them skillshare's annual subscription costs less than 2728 rupees a year which is less than 229 rupees per month which is lesser than the price of a starbucks coffee for things schoolers check the custom link in the description wherein the first 1000 people to click on the link will get a 30% off on skillshare to understand the debt strategy of the adanis let's start with a simple relatable example now mind you people this is an over simplified example so let's try to understand this over simplified example first and then we'll have a look at the complex flowchart of the adanis let's say we have a listed company called think enterprises with a market cap of 10000 crores a revenue of 2500 crores and a net profit of 500 crores and under this company we have got three more companies called think power think infra and think green These three daughter companies are not listed yet but they have a huge potential to scale in the next 10 years. Now at this point in time if Think Enterprises gets an opportunity to build a port that is going to cost 7500 crores the company will have to reject it. Why? Because we don't have the profits to pay 7500 crores and at the same time the banks would hesitate to give us a loan of 7500 crores with such low profits of just 500 crores. And the last way by which Think could raise money would be by pledging the shares as in if my stakes in the company is worth 8000 crores i would pledge 10% of my shares in the company worth 800 crores to the bank then the bank would carry out the risk analysis and may give me 500 crores in loan but in this case to raise 7500 crores i cannot pledge 80% of my stake to the bank to get a loan right that would be ridiculous but this is where a consultant comes in and he designs an intricate framework by which we could back big project in spite of having less profits and here's what the framework looks like firstly think would list all their daughter companies in the stock market and because of the brand value of think enterprises all the three companies will have a stellar ipo so in the next 5 years think green would have a market cap of 100000 crores think power hits 10000 crores and think infra stands at 5000 crores and now our shareholdings amount to 75000 crores 7000 crores and 3500 crores respectively and now if think enterprises wants to raise 7500 crores here's how it would do it Firstly it will raise 2000 crores by projecting its profits so if your company is generating 500 crores of profits bank would not mind lending you 2000 crores because they know that merely through your profits you could repay back the loan along with interest so this way 2000 crores has been raised from the bank loans now we need another 5500 crores this is where method number 2 comes in in this method what think would do is since think green stock price is very very high it would pledge 10% of its own shares to get a bank loan so in this case 10% stake worth 10000 crores is pledged to the bank to get a loan of 6000 crores and once they get this loan they would loan 5000 crores to think enterprises and use the rest of the 1000 crores for the expansion and other projects So now in total we've got 7000 crores and we just need another 500 crores for this we would just issue a bond of 500 crores and raise the money directly from the people and once these bond units are bought that's it 7500 crores of capital has been raised and now we could take up a giant project and make headlines in the market this is the first strategy to raise money that is by taking a loan by pledging the shares of your daughter company and then passing it to another group company to help them grab giant projects and this brings me to the second strategy wherein one group company invests money into another group company and when the time comes this company will sell its stake in that group company and then use the money for itself For example, if Think Infra has some extra cash in the year of 2015 and Think Green is on the verge of rapid expansion, Think Infra would buy 1000 crores worth of shares in Think Green. And as soon as Think Green expands, investors would flock to buy Think Green stocks. And in the next 2 years, Think Green stock would shoot up by 100% and because of this, the value of Think Infra's investment shares in Think Green would be worth 2000 crores. So when the time comes where Think Infra needs 2000 crores extra for their dam construction project they would sell this stake steadily over time and get 2000 crores to build their dam 
This is how a company can leverage its brand value and can raise money by circulating and cross investing with their own group companies eventually to raise dead and bag giant projects. And now if you look at the Adani group you will see something very very similar. Initially Adani Enterprises was the only company listed in the stock market but from 2008 onwards they started listing their companies and now they've got seven companies listed which are Adani Wilmer Adani Enterprises Adani Ports and SCG Adani Power Adani Transmission Green Energy and Adani Gas and then as per the requirements of the company they orchestrated an intricate framework of cash flow just like the one that we learned right now for example in 2015-16 adani properties which is a subsidiary of adani enterprises they bought a 9.05% stake in adani transmission now you see both these firms are in a completely different business but even then the stake was bought and in 2017-18 adani properties exited adani transmission the question is what exactly changed Well if you look at the stock price difference of Adani Transmission in 2015 and 2017 you will see that in July 2015 the stock price stood at 27.6 rupees and by 2017 the value shot up to 126 rupees so 100 crores invested in Adani Transmission in 2015 would be worth at least 400 crores in 2017 and hence Adani Properties investment had been appreciated because of which they could benefit from this transaction so this way the money stays within the company and when needed Adani properties could sell off its stake and use the appreciation to carry out their construction projects. Secondly, between 2013 and 2018, Adani Power was struggling with cash flow. This was because when the power project was built in Mundra, it was expected to get cheap supply of coal from Indonesia. But when Indonesia raised the price of its exported coal, Adani Power Mundra claimed that its cost of coal had risen so much that it could no longer supply power at original rates. So during this period the company's annual report shows several instances where Adani Enterprises made loans to Adani Power directly and it also gave out loans indirectly through subsidies like Adani Infra India or Kutch Power Generation Similarly Adani Transmission's financial statements for 2014-15 show that it borrowed 2794.24 crores by pledging all movable and immovable assets of two transmission lines and almost half of this money that it borrowed that is about 1222.97 crores went as a loan to another listed company Adani Enterprises Similarly from 2014 to 18 Adani Transmission got money as loans and equity from Adani Enterprises and its subsidiaries in 2014 Adani Transmission repaid a part of these loans in the same year but also bought shares in another group company and set up two subsidiaries then Adani Transmission repaid old loans and borrowed fresh from Adani Ports and SCG so you see this entire complexity is a permutation and combination of just three moves buying equity in group company to generate cash flow in the future using another group company's loan eligibility to pass it on to another group company and lastly to direct cash flow to a troubled company as and when needed and when this method is applied for seven companies spanning seven different industries having thousands of crores of investments you will see the answer to the incredible rise and expansion of the adani group and you know what guys this master plan of cash flow creates a super powerful virtuous cycle whereby when an adani company wants to contest for a tender they are able to easily raise funds after raising funds when they build a huge infra project every single news channel and media house screams out the progress of the adanis and this in turn boosts investor confidence and more people go on to invest in adani stock So again when the price of these stocks go up they are able to pledge the value of the stock to get loans which again helps them bag huge government projects now although this looks risky to me what we cannot deny is the sheer genius of how intricate and mind boggling this entire process is because what i showed you are still an over simplified version of the transactions so what goes on every single day in the finance department of the adani group is a calculation that's probably only meant for a genius to understand this is the story of the incredible rise of the adanis and this brings me to the last part of the episode and that are the study materials to help you understand this debt strategy of the adanis better Meanwhile if you're someone who wants to take business related classes check out the classes on skillshare from the link in the description and get a 30% off Moving on to the study materials the first thing I'm attaching is a scroll article that will give you an in-depth idea about how the intricate financial framework of the Adani group works Secondly I am attaching a Wall Street Mojo article that will help you understand the concept of pledged shares in depth And lastly if you're fascinated by the growth of the Adani group and if you want to look at the reasons behind their acquisition do check out a video on why Adani's bought Ambuja and ACC and you'll be able to understand what is the strategy that goes behind those acquisitions That's all from my side 
today guys if you learned something valuable please make sure to hit the like button in order to make youtube baba happy and for more such insightful business and political case studies please subscribe to our channel thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye bye I was actually honestly not expecting this genius cash flow strategy working behind the rapid expansion of so many Adani Group companies. It is indeed mind boggling as well as mind blowing to me at least. And it is a lot to know about. It is also fascinating that how uh, Think School has summarized uh, this framework, this entire framework, this long and complicated to understand framework or of uh, raising cash flow or generating funds in a short 12-13 uh, minute video. But he has a stashed uh, some uh, study material as well in terms of the good sources and websites where we can have a look to better understand these things i'll probably have a look on that meanwhile we are gonna check out some other videos as well uh, regarding the business case studies and uh, other strategies which has have been recently being followed in in the market or or in in, in the business houses which we frequently do not get to hear about directly but uh, probably will get to understand uh, watching the detailed uh, video analysis of those strategies and business plans uh, till then please subscribe to our channel and uh, i'll see you in next video till then take care bye bye